Congratulations on your purchase of the S2S Comfort Plus. You are just one step away from your wellness goals. But now, I'm going to work with you and we're going to assemble the unit together. I've already removed the top of the box and I've started to take out the components, but I wanted to go uh, speak about the kits that are included. So let's first start with kit A. And uh, this is going to be your bolt washer and this is going to be used for attaching the arm. Kit B is for the adherence if you're going to mount it with a um, grommet hole or if you do not have an existing grommet hole and can't use the desk clamp, you're just going to drill a half an inch hole and use the grommet, the grommet hardware. Kit C is your VESA quick release plate. Kit D will be the hardware to attach the keyboard tray and the secondary document shelf. And these are your Allen keys, which you're going to get very familiar with. So let's start with our first component, which is the base. Now, on the Cutford Plus, it's going to ship as if you are going to mount it using the clamp mounting method. It's uh, meant for desks, um, or it's already pre-configured rather, for a three-quarter of inch desk, but if your desk is thicker, all you have to do is just loosen and then uh, keep it to the appropriate height. Now, if you're going to mount it with an existing grommet hole, or as I mentioned before, if you don't have an existing grommet hole, you're going to make your own, your own hole. Let me show you what that's going to look like. Okay, so you're going to take the um, you're going to take the uh, four bolts off um, from the plate, and then you're just going to pop off this section as well. Now you won't be needing this component, but I advise that you do hold on to it so that in the future, if you ever are going to use a different desk and you want to use the clamp mount, you already have all the hardware. Okay, so we talked about um, the uh, kit B, so you're going to use that bolt, and then all you're going to do is take that bolt and the washer, put it through the hole, and then you'll see on the bottom of the plate here, that's where the hole is, and then you're just going to go underneath through the existing um, grommet hole or your new hole that you're going to produce, and that's how you're going to mount it. So now we're going to go to our next step, which is putting the arm onto the base. All right, now you're going to take your white washer from kit A. You're just going to slide it on. Also make sure you take the plastic uh, piece off, uh, the plastic wrapping rather. I'm just going to um, slide that in. And now you're going to lift this up. And now we're going to insert it. And sometimes it takes a, a, a little bit getting used to. And just give it a little, little uh, push, and now it's in. Now, the instructions for, for steps three through six, we're going to bypass those for now. And let me explain why. In the instructions for steps three through six, basically they want you to use the bolt and the washer from kit A, pull the arm down, and then set, set it. Now, can you do that? Yes, but with 25 pounds of, of, of torque, it's not that easy to do by yourself. So what we have learned in the thousands of installs that we've done with this is that we're just going to uh, add some weight to it, go through the, the, follow it, the other uh, steps, and then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna do that. So now let's get to the next step by adding the uh, weight of the keyboard tray and the document holder tray as well. Great, so now let's install the work surface. You're going to use the work surface tray that has the, what I call the rivets, the six rivets on there, and those six rivets are going to match up to the six dimples. Make sure that the uh, uh, curved area is going to face you. What I usually do is I like to flip up the tray, 
line them up and put my hand on there. For now, um, we're going to be using our kit D. I've already taken my items out of kit D. So for the work surface, you're going to use the four flat head screws and then you're going to use your one eighth of an inch Allen key. And then what I um, find easier is I put the uh, uh, flat head screw on this area of the Allen key, like so. And now I'm going to come back and show you our next step. Now let's adhere the keyboard tray onto the S2S workstation. Now if you do have your own keyboard tray that you love, you can use that so long as the whole patterns on your keyboard tray match up to the um, keyboard head mount. But I'm going to show you the uh, keyboard tray that comes with, this, with the solution. Now you can follow the instructions to a T, but what I have found with all of the installs that we have performed over the years that this is just a bit easier. So feel free to use whichever method is more comfortable for you. I'm going to take the uh, screws that were in kit D, the long screws, and I'm going to um, insert them into the, the, the dimples of the tray. I'm going to push it all the way, make sure you push it all the, the screw all the way down. And one more to go. Now I'm going to flip it over. Make sure there's nothing underneath there. <laughs> and now I'm going to take the styrofoam piece out, open it up, and turn it over. And you're going to see various hole patterns, and you're just going to line that up like so. What I always do is I just hold my hand while I'm taking my um, washers. Uh, by the way, always uh, teeth down so they can grip the screw. And we'll tighten these up later, but we're just going to get them on right now. And this one. And two more to go. I'll try to make this fast. <laughs> and then the last one. Okay, so now we're ready. So, just move this over here, move this around to show you. All right, so we're basically going to be sliding in the keyboard tray um, onto this component. Now, before I do so, uh, just talk about things really quickly. So there is one of the wonderful elements to this component is that it can fit folks from five feet tall all the way up to six feet, five. And so what we want to do is when we're installing the keyboard tray system, if somebody is um, shorter is on the lower lower side, five feet, five one. You're going to want to mount it lower, and if you're much taller, you're going to want to mount it taller. And I'll, I'll show you also how to move it um, in just a moment. So, what we're going to do is we're going to. I always like to come in on an angle like that, and then I'm going to take the hardware that was in kit D, and there's a hole behind here. Um, and you're just going to put that, that um, screw in there and you're going to take your Allen key and give it a turn or two just so it's on. Now we, we, we can definitely tighten that later but I just want to show you something. So that isn't going anywhere. So if you do need to adjust the height of that, you're just going to give it a lift and there it is. So now we're going to go on to the next step. Before we go on to the next step of mounting the monitor to the S2S workstation, I did want to mention one quick thing. Uh, you can keep the keyboard tray in what is more of a preferred ergonomic position of a, of a negative tilt. And you can make that from very, very simple to, to, to very, very pronounced. What you're going to do is you're going to take your smallest um, Allen key, you're going to flip up the tray. Uh, I find it easier to use the longer portion of the Allen key. You're going to feel for the hole that's closest to you and then just put it in there and then you're just going to make a couple of turns. You don't want to overturn it and then voila, it's in a negative tilt. 
All right, now let's adhere the monitor. So I don't have a horrifically long video. What we did is that we've um, uh, taken our Kit C, which is a quick release plate, and we've already mounted it to our monitor. So all you have to remember on with the quick release plate is that you're going to want to line it up, arrow up. And I just want to mention a couple of quick things about your monitor before we do this. Make sure that your monitor has either a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter or 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter hole pattern on it. If you do not have that, you will need some sort of a um, VESA mount adapter. But if you're not sure, let us know ahead of time. And all you're going to do is you're going to um, slide on the uh, quick release plate uh, to the back of your monitor and then line it up and then use the hardware and just screw those in. Now some monitors, a few Dells and I believe a few um, Asus monitors are more inset so the quick release plate will not fit. Don't worry, you could just direct mount that and in the instructions it shows you how to do so. So all we're going to do now uh, is um, since I'm shorter, uh, I've already moved the um, uh, monitor uh, plate uh, down a little, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and slide that on. And let me just do that right now. And now your monitor's on. One of the uh, steps that I didn't mention uh, was to talk about the integrated cable management when we were mounting the monitor. Uh, because my uh, display did not have the cord, I neglected to state that. So uh, the S2S Comfort Plus has integrated cable management, so that you're going to run all the, the wire from your monitor. If you have a wired keyboard and mouse, you can also do that. Uh, just make sure that your wires are long enough so that when you go from a seated to a standing position, they're not going to be compromised. All right, so now we're going to set the tension of the arm. You don't want to make it too uh, light and loose because uh, that's when it might ghost up and that could also cause a lot of movement. Um, I'm left-handed, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my camera person come around and we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is you're going to have to push the arm all the way down so that you can lift off the, um, the cover. You're going to see three um, areas. Right now to adjust the tension, you're going to use your middle area. And sometimes, and once again, I'm doing this with my right hand and I'm left-handed, and I'm also not wearing my glasses. So um, for me, I just want to kind of come in at an angle and make sure that I'm all the way in there. cameraman's going to do that for me. Thank you, cameraman. <laughs> it's tough being um, um, left-handed in a right-handed world. All right, so now, once again, um, very important step. You don't want to overturn it because that could compromise the unit. So usually I say it's better to err on the side of caution. Since I've done this a few times, I know that for, 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 for me, um, uh, for, uh, uh, for my uh, monitor rather, um, I'm going to probably turn this about three times. So I'm going to turn it once, twice, and now three. Okay, got my key. Now I'm going to lift my monitor um, mount up. And now I'm just going to test to make sure that I have it at the right height. So grab a chair. Move this down. And if I had my keyboard, <laughs> I would start key, uh, using my keyboard. Alrighty, earlier in the assembly uh, process, I mentioned that uh, we were going to bypass step three. So now we're going to come back to step three. So once again, the arm has to be down at its lowest position. You're going to take the, um, the cap part off. You don't have to put the bolt in. Um, and since it's a rather large bolt, I don't want you to see me <laughs> putting it in. But basically, I just want to show you where it's going to go. And it's going to go right down here. 
Now you're going to put it in, and then you're going to adjust it with your Allen key. 